peaceful atmosphere. Welcome to yet another Jenny show. Um, a lot of you have been asking to like know when the shows were taped, so this one is August 2nd, which means it'll get to you in a couple days, and then it's all yours. I don't know why you really want to know, but now you know, and knowing is half the battle. So, um, actually, there's not much going on in my life right now. Things are kind of at a slow point right now, but I feel things picking up. I just had like a revelation today, but we'll talk about that later. Um, first thing is um, I got a new ferret. Uh, his name is Skittle, to keep with the candy theme. Um, Spree went to the zoo Aww. a couple days ago, so Spree remains in quarantine for a couple weeks, and then he gets to be a handling animal in a children's zoo. So if you ever at the, cha- the if you ever get a chance to go to the St. Louis Zoo um, in the children's zoo, uh, Spree the hedgehog is one of their little animals now. Take a picture, guys. I miss him. Right, so we got a new ferret, and he's just a little baby. Um, he's also in quarantine right now. Um, apparently, baby ferrets are known to commonly have a virus called ECE that they tend to carry, but give it to the older ferrets, so it kills the older ferrets first. So they want me to keep him in quarantine for three months, just in case he has it. And Aww, so it's really terrible. But anyway, he already has an eye infection and the flu, so he gets little little antibiotic drops and he gets eye drops <laughs> twice a day for, for the next like week. And uh, and then we take him in for baby shots and then more baby shots and then more baby shots. But all the animals have to go into the vet anyway. But he's such a little cutie, he's so small and he's he's kind of like panda colored. I think that's what that that color is called. He's kind of a hybrid. He doesn't really fit any one patterning, but he's we wanted to get one that looked different so that we'd be able to tell him from the other ferrets easily. But they all need a bath. But our big our big project lately with the ferrets is uh, is assembling this huge maze for them. Um, we've been buying all these tubes and like sticking, sticking them together. But like every time we go to the pet store, we buy them out. Like we buy all the pieces. But we're having a really hard time finding the T-shaped pieces because those are the really valuable ones. You know, those are the <laughs> ones that they really help. Like the straight ones are boring. The curved ones are kind of cool, but the T ones you can make great shapes with that. But it's hard to find a bunch. But I found a place online that sells them individually. You can like order like a case of the T's if you want. Oh, that's great. So, so as soon as my delivery comes in, it's gonna it's gonna like take over the whole office. There'll be no room for desks in there anymore. Your shipment of T's. That's right. We're like we're fiending for them. I swear. <laughs> So I've been getting oodles of emails from people worried about your health. How have you been feeling? Doing a little better. Yeah, actually doing quite a bit better. Um, I went to go see my favorite massage lady in the whole world, Erna. She's German and she works like about half an hour from here in Maryland. And um, I guess that's still in D.C. I don't know. Friendship Heights. That's that's still in D.C. I think so. Yeah. And um, she's, she's like, she's a miracle worker. I, I'm in awe of this woman. She's wonderful and soothing. She's like the embodiment of balance and calm and she's 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 great. She's so great. Like it's not even just that you're getting like a body massage. Like it feels like she's massaging your brain too. It's so great. But uh she ended up doing like about fifteen minutes of actual massage and then she did polarity therapy, which is like using the placement of hands on the body to direct energy away to or from energy centers in your body and and she had me like envisioning a white light in my stomach and all kinds of strange stuff. And um, that night I ate like more than I've eaten in a whole day. Like I had a piece and a half of pizza and half an order of breadsticks from Pizza Hut, which is like tons for me. And so, you know, every time my stomach would start to feel a little bad, I'd like to do, I'd do some little home polarity therapy, just like stick one hand on your stomach and one hand on like your thigh because they're both fire fire element energy things. I, she didn't really explain too much to me because I probably wasn't very interested at that point. But, uh, and I've been feeling pretty good. I mean, very, good. like, not nearly as gross as usual. And I've been, like, eating more, too. So I'm still losing a little weight. I just passed 145, which was, you know, my ideal, like, goal weight. So, so I have to, like, start making an effort to keep it on now, like, like a more serious effort. 
but I'm doing pretty good and I'm so happy. Um, probably a lot of it also has to do with the fact that it's really easy to eat while you're playing video games. And Jocelyn and I have been playing a lot of video games. Oh, and one of my fans sent me um, candy. Uh, Harvey sent me four boxes of Junior Mints and a big bag of M&Ms. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not really fond of M&Ms. Like, I, I, I have to confess that I like ate a handful and threw the rest away because I'm, I'm not a big chocolate person. But the Junior Mints, like, I just plowed through them, like, four boxes in three days. Like, they were the big boxes, too. I just, oh, my goodness, I can just eat, I can eat hordes of Junior Mints. So if you want to, like, join me, like, keep Jenny from becoming emaciated fun, like, send me Junior Mints. There's an address on the website. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, other than that, I'm doing pretty good. My asthma has been kind of suckage, but, you know, that's just asthma and summer weather in D.C., but other than that, I'm feeling pretty good. So you can stop bugging Carla. <laughs> well, I didn't mind it, but it, it was the sad really and all these people. Yeah. But, yeah, but uh, I, I'm doing okay, and I, I think it's going to be all right. I ate my radioactive egg, and they don't think I have gastroparesis, and have to go back in and see the doctor to review my results, stuff like that. And I don't know if, if we're going to plan another, like, attack, or if we're just going to see if I keep feeling better on my own. I don't know. So maybe I was just stressing myself sick. I have no clue whatsoever. But I feel pretty good. Peter in Lewisburg wants to know what you think of South Park. I think they're really funny. I love South Park. Um, Trey Parker and Matt Stone are so talented, I swear. You watch the credits for like the movie, Every song is written by them. Um, we just bought the soundtrack, and or we bought the Chef Chef Aid album, mm -hmm. and they play instruments all over it. They like write all the episodes. They they help with it. They produce everything. Like they do everything. And um, I also saw them in the movie Basketball, like acting, and they wrote that too. It's just like hysterical. Like they're really really talented, you know, and. Um, their sarcastic sense of humor like suits me perfectly because I'm all about sarcasm. But yeah, I, I love the show. I love the show. I saw the movie twice. Not even because I thought the movie in general was funny, but the stuff with Saddam Hussein. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that stuff was so funny. And it's just so much worse that Saddam Hussein is still alive. <laughs> so I can just picture that there's like a price on the heads of oh, those shoe sure. guys now, you know, because... But I'm saying doesn't tend to fuck around from from what I what, from what I've seen. You know, I don't know him personally, so I'm making no judgment judgmentive statements. <laughs> I don't think that's even a word, judgmentive. But anyway, okay, we have a question from Jay Kelly. He's apparently taken this question even to Bill Nye, the science guy, and has been unable to get an answer. He wants to know when you say it's raining. What does the it refer to? We even took a little informal poll around here as to what we think the it refers to. Um, I came up with it meaning the sky, like the sky is raining. Because you, you hear people sometimes saying, like, what's the sky doing? It's kind of a colloquialism, but it's perfectly valid. So the sky is raining. Joffrey at first came up with the weather is raining. You, know, you can also say, what's the weather doing? So that's also perfectly valid. And then Tom, the camera guy, happened to chime in that there's like in Latin, a term for the existence, like there's a special it verb meaning exists, like with the not the pronoun, and it, we all got confused and we just let him win. <laughs> so Tom says it's Latin. Oh, this isn't going to seem like a big deal to you, but this has been like an over year long fiasco for me, so I'm going to tell you about it anyway. Um, I got this ottoman along with all of my other furniture when I moved in, so it's like a year old. But the top was delivered with the corner torn. So I called them and I asked them to please replace my top. So they sent me a replacement top, which was happily delivered a couple weeks later, torn. Already, like, from the package. So the guy came, he took a look at it, and he said, I guess we'll have to order you another one. So like four months later, they finally got me another one that came, and it's the wrong top. It's like not the top for a storage ottoman, it's the top for like a regular ottoman. So it won't even go on this one at all. So I called them back, and they said, we'll get you another top. So uh, I finally, just like two days ago, got a, a good top. It's the right top, it's the right color, all of the corners are fine, there's no tears in it anywhere. So it took me like 
over a year to get my ottoman fixed. So uh, eventually, by the end, I was like hoping that they wouldn't get me the right top so that they could just take it back and give me back my $800 because I'm starting to feel like I paid way too much for an ottoman that keeps coming in wrong. But it's all right now, and I have my happy ottoman, and it's great. And I still have the torn one on here. I'm waiting for the repair guy to call me back and like say he'll come put the new one on, which for all I know, could probably take another six months to a year. So. But I'm trying to stay positive, damn it. All right, a viewer, Sean, wants to know what you think of sex before marriage. Oh, I think it's terrible, really. I don't um, know. Uh, I think it's it's a good idea. Um, I, w I don't know. Um, I think that sexual compatibility is a very large part of any relationship. And um, I think, it, hopefully, if two people really love each other, then they will be sexually compatible because they'll be willing to work things out and talk to each other. And so if two people are really a, a good, healthy couple, then even if they don't have sex before marriage, they should be able to like be or work out compatibility afterwards. But we know that people don't treat things ideally or have ideal relationships. So I think for most people, it's probably a good idea to have sex before marriage just to make sure. And I'm not saying, like, have it once before you get married. Mm -hmm. Because, like, once is no indicator of, like, what your sex life is going to be. So all those people that say, you know, I tried it once before I got married and I knew we were compatible. Like, once doesn't tell you much. You need, you need a broader base for, for that kind of weighty opinion. So, yes. I'm I'm all for it, but you know, I, I imagine that you could get away without it if you were that kind of, you know, thoughtful, healthy person. I'm just admitting that life is not ideal. Mm -hmm. Lowering my expectations a little bit. On uh, on Friday we went to go see an outdoor free concert of the National Symphony Orchestra. It was very nice and everything. Um we went with some friends of Rob's and some and some Rob is a friend of Joffrey's, so we went with Rob and Rob's girlfriend and some of their friends as well. And um, had a lovely time. We spent a lot of time with drawing on napkins, like making funny pictures and stuff. But we were we were appreciating the music. It just needed to be louder. Like classical music is only really great when it like booms, you know, when it has real kind of gusto behind it. It was a little too quiet, but um, had a good time. But because it was outdoors for like three hours, two and a half hours, like my stomach hurt so bad because the heat just killed me. So we went out to eat at the most, the most amazing Italian restaurant. Oh my goodness! Um, I've I've eaten Italian food in Italy, like at little hole in the wall restaurants, and I've eaten Italian food in America at like Mama Leone's and some of the finest Italian restaurants in America, and the two don't even compare. Italian food, even the crap, is so wonderful mm -hmm. and like even great american italian food just kind of leaves me uninterested it's just like you know that's great it tastes very much like tomatoes and flour that's wonderful but this place was just amazing it was so good um adams morgan at like 18th and columbia it's called pasta mia and no i'm not getting paid to say this or anything i don't do endorsements but mm -hmm. but when i find such oh I'm, I'm just in awe it's like italian food like you find in italy like i didn't even realize it, is, it existed in the united states so i'm just so happy so i'm i'm definitely uh now that i'm starting to be able to eat again i think i'm going to be frequenting many places like that now that i'm like i'm so excited i can start to eat again so great so your birthday is coming up soon. Do you have any any birthday plans? Um, no, none at all, really. I'm gonna have to plan something. <laughs> I know I'm so lame, but chances are pretty good that Joffrey will be gone to Pensick by then. And like, <clears throat> I think my friend Bob is planning to come down and visit like that weekend, but that's still like many days after my birthday. So no, no plans. We'll push you to go out. Maybe I'll like take a nice bubble bath. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not even remotely excited about turning 23. You know, I'm just there. There's no good birthdays after. You know, it's, yeah. After 21, it's like woohoo! It's another year. Great. Wonderful. Like the only next big milestone is like 30. You know, like do you look forward to that? I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I'm a little scared of 25. Yeah. I'll be 25 this year. 
<laughs> that sounds old. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, weary. Hmm. After that, it's kind of going downhill. You're definitely aging at that point. <laughs> That's terrible. I don't know. Um, I'm not, like, dreading it. Like, I don't feel like I'm getting old or anything. I mean, I'm, you know, 23, 22, 23-ish. <laughs> but still, I'm... I don't know, it's just so, like, uninteresting to me now. It's just like, okay, yeah, it's my birthday. So I don't even really want presents or anything, so. Don't send presents! Don't send presents! Sponsor <laughs> kids! Jeez! Like, I made this great plea for it last year, and mm -hmm. I got, like, three of them. And, like, I, I sponsored two, and, like, three other people did, and some other people who had already sponsored kids sent me pictures. So, like, I made this great, huge rally for it, and, like, three people pulled through. Which isn't to say I didn't like all the gifts I got and everything, but but still, you know, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I, I, I'm still getting like updated pictures from the people. So yeah, you have a cool. computer full of them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I convinced Bob to sponsor a child, and, and Bob doesn't even like homeless people talking to him. Like he, this, this homeless guy came up to us at the drive-through at Wendy's. And like asked for some money, so I like gave him a five and like shook his hand. And and Bob like after the guy walked away, he's like, I can't believe you shook his hand. Why? It's just because like he's so dirty and you shook his hand. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm sure he passed me some huge tremendous disease. Like, but so for me to have like gotten him to sponsor, <laughs> sponsor a child, I'm like, woohoo! Mm -hmm. Never lived in a big city, right? Yeah, he lives. Uh, he lives in like upper middle white class suburbia mm. with like a huge lawn as far as you can see. Yeah. I mean I know his family works hard and everything, but still he's he's I think he takes a lot for granted, but I feel like I'm I'm making progress for the forces of good. <laughs> I I also have decided to, to start a new collection. You know, I collect band aids already. Um <laughs> So if you want to give me something really cheap, if you can't like afford to sponsor to, if you can't afford to sponsor a kid, like buy me band aids, like special bonus points for people who live abroad and buy I me like four band, band aid collection. We're gonna have to go check this out. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, I I collect band aids, and when I was abroad, I like bought foreign band aids and everything, just a few ones, ones for, like cartoons and you know stuff like that on them. I'm, I don't get like the transparent fabric strips or anything mm -hmm. like that. But uh, I'm going to start a second collection of magic wands. Not like, not like magician magic wands, but like little girl fairy magic mm. wands. So, so that's like my new collection. But uh, I found one on eBay that, that was really cute. It has this little like ball in the back that you put fairy dust in, and when you shake it, like the fairy dust comes out. So like, you sprinkle it around with your magic wand. But the price like got a little too high for my blood, so I like bowed out of it and like told my friends, like, oh, you know, it's this really cute magic wand, but I guess I'm giving up on it. So Josh went ahead and bid on it. Like, so now I know how much he paid for it too. But, uh, but so I'm, I'm getting the little sprinkly magic wand for my first time. <laughs>